Hello and welcome to this video. So in this video, we'll be discussing a new type of series known as the Altering series. And we'll also be discussing a test for that particular series known as the Altering series test. So let's get right to it. What is an Altering series? So an Altering series is a series of the form... So let me just write down my sigma. It's a series of the form negative 1 to the power of n times bn or sigma of negative 1 to the power of n plus 1 times bn. Any, of the, any series of this form is known as an alternating series. So let's go ahead and write that down. So these, anything of this form is known as an alternating series. The reason it's alternating is because, of course, it, if you notice the sign of this thing, at odd values, this will be negative, and at even values, this will be, this will be positive. So look something like this, for example, possibly, or even something like this. Now the question is though, does this thing converge or diverge? And it turns out that we have a test for this. Now, we have the altering series test, as I mentioned in the start of the video when I mentioned the title. But the thing is that the altering series test can only be used to prove that the altering series converges. We have to use an alternative method to prove divergence for an, alter for an alternating series. But that being said, let's go ahead and write down how an alternating series test works. So let's go ahead and write that down. So we have the alternating series test. So alternating series test. Okay, so this is a test that can be used to prove the convergence of an alternating series. So let's go ahead and write down this test. Okay, so suppose that we have a series. I'm just going to move this over a little bit. So suppose that we have a series, which is the summation of an. And of course, an is an alternating series. So an is either negative 1 to the power of n times bn, or it's negative 1 to the power of n plus 1 times bn. Any of these things will be the alternating series. Okay, so as long as we have an alternating series, the following implies co convergence. So let's go and write down the conditions. So of course, first, where bn is bigger than or equal to zero, for all n, so recall that this symbol means for all, then if the following conditions hold, so we just write down the conditions, so if the limit as n approaches infinity of bn equals zero and The sequence overall, so when I say the sequence, I mean the terms in the series, is decreasing. So if this is all true, so if you have an altering series where the terms are bigger than or equal to zero, and if the limit of the terms go to zero, and this is a decreasing sequence, then the series overall convergence. Note, this says nothing about divergence. In order to prove divergence for an alternating series, we'd have to do something else. So, but this is a test for convergence. So, how does this test work? So, let's do a few examples of this thing. Alright, so the first example, we have the following. So, show convergence or divergence. Now, of course, we have you would have to use a different test for divergence, but nevertheless. So, show convergence or divergence of the following series. So, in this case, it would be the summation from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of n plus 1 over n. 
Okay, so in order to do this, we can do the following. So let's go ahead and paste this right here. Okay, now this is the same thing as the summation from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 times 1 over n. And of course, in this case, my bn term is 1 over n. So let's go ahead and check the limit of this thing. So we have to limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n, and that gives us 0. Obviously, I don't think I need to imply, so I don't think I need to tell you that this is clearly a decreasing sequence. I mean, look at the terms. It's, it's, it's kind of obvious that this is decreasing. It's just, you know, it, it's getting smaller and smaller. Or I should probably, this, I should probably do this discreetly. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of obvious that this is decreasing. You can check this rigorously using derivatives, but I mean, I don't think I need to do that here. It's pretty intuitive. So the limit is is equal to zero and is decreasing. So therefore, this converges. So again, okay, nothing particularly special going on here. Okay, let's do another example. So this time, we have the same kind of situation. So show convergence or divergence of the following series. So let me just go ahead and paste that here. Okay, except this time the series isn't going to be that. It's going to be the summation from n equals 2 to infinity of cosine of pi n over the square root of n. Okay, here's the thing though. The cosine of pi n it might not look like it's an alternating series, but it, it actually is. Cosine of pi n is equal to minus 1 to the power of n. And the reason for that is because cosine of pi n, since n is assumed to be an integer, well, it's not a sum, it's not more of an assumption, it's because it is. n is always a, an integer. For example, at cosine of pi, we're at negative 1. Cosine of 2 pi, 1, cosine of 3 pi, negative 1, cosine of 4 pi, 1, and so on. So it will always alternate back and forth between negative 1 and 1. So as a, re as a result, we can technically rewrite cosine of pi n as negative 1 to the n. If n is, you know, an odd number, this will be negative. If n is an even number, this will always be positive. So that's kind of how this works. All right. Now the question is, you know, how does this help us? Well, this is good because now we can replace the cosine with negative 1 to the n. So we get the summation from n equals 2 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of n over the square root of n. But then we can rewrite this in the following way. We can rewrite this as the summation from n equals 2 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times 1 over the square root of n. So our bn term is 1 over square root of n. So bn equals 1 over the square root of n. So what does this imply? Well, once again, we can take the limit of this thing. So the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over the square root of n, well, that's going to give us 0. And by very similar logic, once again, this, it's, it's kind of obvious that this isn't decreasing. And if you're really interested, you can check this using derivatives, but it's kind of obvious that it's decreasing. So therefore, because it's decreasing and the limit is zero, this applies that the series in question, so the original series that we were kind of working with, this thing converges. You might be asking, how can an altering series that goes back and forth between negative one and one converge? Well, here's the thing. Now, this is just a brief illustration, but the series could theoretically look something like this, in which the altering terms back and forth eventually just kind of die down to one fixed value like that. This happens all the time, all the time actually, in the case of oscillations and many other kind of physical phenomena. But eventually, it kind of dies down. It's kind of the same idea in this situation as well. All right. Now, let's go ahead and talk about another example. This one is a little bit more work, but it's still not too bad for the most part. Okay, so let's talk about this particular example. 
Okay, so this time we have, so let me just go ahead and copy paste the same thing. So show convergence or divergence of the following theories. And as I mentioned, this can't be used, this cannot be used to prove divergence. We would have to use some other test to prove for divergence, which we'll do later. But nevertheless, let's just go ahead and continue this. So it's gonna be negative one to the n minus one, natural log of n over n. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this out. So show convergence and di or divergence of the following series. So how does this work? Well, okay, so bn is equal to natural log of n over n. So let's go ahead and do this out. So this one, once again, I can reason this out using the following kind of method. Natural log of n is a very slow growing function. n is grows n generally grows a lot quicker than natural log of n. So this is eventually going to be decreasing. That being said, let's be a little bit more rigorous about this though. So the derivative, so f prime of x for some okay, so if you define a new function, so f of x equals natural log of x over x. And the reason we want to pick a function instead of a a sequence is because the derivative of a sequence is isn't really defined because the derivative set of the derivative has to exist for continuous sets of values for the limit to exist. So we need to pick a function. That being said, if you take a derivative, you'll get one minus the natural log of x over x squared. And then in order to you know show that it's decreasing, well this has to be less than zero. So this gives one minus natural log of x is less than zero, which means that one is bigger than the natural log of x, or e is less than x, meaning that when x is bigger than e, this will be decreasing. So for all x bigger than e, it'll be decreasing. So that's fine. So this, uh, in other words, what does this mean? This means that bn plus one will always be less than bn for all n bigger than or equal to three. Great. So that's good to go. So we're good to go here. So let's go ahead and do the limit of this thing. So if you do the limit as n approaches infinity of natural log of n over n. Now let me just go ahead and erase this actually. Okay, so if you go ahead and do this, we'll get the following. So plugging infinity over infinity, uh, plugging infinity, we're gonna get infinity over infinity. I just spoiled it there. So we can apply L'Hopital's rule here. So if we apply L'Hopital's rule on this thing, we'll get the following limit. So we'll get the limit as n approaches infinity of one over n divided by n, but that's gonna give you zero, meaning that this thing converges to no one's surprise. Okay, so with that, I've covered every example of the alternating series test. And with that, we've also done the video. So if you have any questions about the alternating series test or any of the examples I did, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to answer. But otherwise, if this really helped you, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll really appreciate it. Thank you all so much and have a great day.